In 2005, Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf, Gulf Coast of the United States. Its aftermath was devastating. Over a thousand people were killed and countless more were lost or injured by rushing rapids or splintering debris. Families were torn apart, homes were destroyed, and the affected areas were changed forever. Coverage of this disaster and a first-hand look into the destruction experienced by victims touched the hearts of people all over the world and brought us all together in sympathy and support for victims. This story, along with so many more, both positive and negative, have undoubtedly shaped our world, our perspectives, and our individual lives to be what they are today. Sharing personal accounts, events, world news, and ideas brings the world together, and it is writers that are behind crafting and presenting these stories to the public. My name is Katie Berger, and I'm conducting an independent study in the field of journalism. Ever since elementary school, I've had a passion for creating stories and sharing my thoughts through writing. Throughout my education, I've fostered and refined this passion, and I am now ready to pursue it as a career. Mary Kay Ash once said, every failure, obstacle, or hardship is an opportunity in disguise. Success, in many cases, is failure turned inside out. The greatest pollution problem we face today is negativity. Eliminate the negative attitude and believe you can do anything. Replace, if I can, I hope, maybe, with I can, I will, I must. The optimism, diligence, and persistence described here by Miss Ash is exactly what I strive to achieve in my endeavors in journalism. In my pursuit of a journalism career, I plan to hold these goals and qualities in mind, keeping a mindset focused on growth. Over the course of ISM thus far, I've expanded my knowledge of journalism by means of informational interviews and independent research. Um, the first person I interviewed was Miss Mervosh, Miss um, Sarah Mervosh, a breaking news inter enterprise reporter at the Dallas Morning News. From her, I learned that broadcast and print journalism have very different timing and that one, broadcast journalists have to spend a much longer period of time working their way up to being employed by a large corporation. And two, broadcast news stories are much shorter and more concise than the same story would be if published in print. Um, because broadcast journalists have to start at low, kind of local stations and kind of work their way up through producing reels and so forth, they take a much longer time to get employed by maybe like CNN or NBC, while a print journalist could go straight to being employed by, say, the Dallas Morning News if they wanted to. Also, um, because broadcast journalists only have a few minutes to present a story, they have to be more concise, um, while a print story can focus more on background details and include more quotes from sources if they want to. Because technology is rapidly developing and more people are looking to get their information faster, Ms. Mervosh told me that publications, including the Dallas Morning News, are focusing primarily on publishing information online rather than in print. The internet is where they can reach more people in a shorter amount of time while keeping the information up to date. Obviously, as a journalist, talking to people and getting their point of view on a story is crucial. However, there is inevitably going to be people that don't want to talk to you. How they refuse to comment will vary, but this process builds thick skin um, by getting used to the process of rejection, which helps a journalist build persistence and get used to the process of acquiring sources. My next interview was with, was with Ms. Rebecca Silvestri of the Plano Profile. She's the executive editor there. As editor of a local magazine, she placed emphasis on the importance of getting out into the community to find stories to write about. Although groups do come to the magazine in hopes of advertising their business, the main way that they get stories to publish is by word of mouth. Writing about unique events that locals are talking about ensures that the information being published is something that is genuinely of interest to the magazine's readers. She also called one of the biggest challenges of publishing a magazine the fact that by the time it is published, it is old news. In our nonstop society, we want everything as immediately as possible, which is bad news for a magazine that takes at least a week to print, edit, lay out, and distribute. After Ms. Silvestri, I interviewed my mentor, Ms. Stacy Parks. Ms. Parks has experience in many realms of journalism, including crime, which lends itself to many beneficial lessons regarding compassion. She told me a story about an interaction when she was first getting into crime journalism, and she didn't really know the guidelines of approaching such a sensitive story. She was covering a murder trial, and she immediately, on the scene of the murder, approached the victim's parents and tried to get a comment, and was immediately, quote, ripped into. From this, she learned and passed on to me the importance of reading the situation and using your better judgment when going right into a story and attempts to get details. 
Having compassion when talking to these sources is crucial because in order to get a truthful and genuine response, the source has to trust you and at least want to talk to you. As online editor, she was also able to tell me about the formatting and content of online stories and how they differ from detailed print stories. Online stories have to be more concise as people that go online looking for stories typically just go for a snapshot of information rather than wanting to sit down for an in-depth analysis of an ongoing phenomenon. My fourth interview was with Miss Christine Perrineau, editor of Frisco Style Magazine. Miss Perrineau taught me the importance of building relationships with members in the community. As she focuses on the close-knit community that is Frisco, she obviously has less new and exciting information to work with than someone covering a larger area such as Dallas would. This being so, building friendships with as many diverse groups and people as possible ensures that she finds out about anything new happening within any realm of the community. After that, I interviewed Miss Stacy Gerard, the editor of the Home and Wedding section of D Magazine. This was a very different experience for me, but it was very beneficial because she was offered to she was able to offer me a new perspective on the magazine experience, as she called it. She explained the difference between online and print journalism as sitting down with a magazine as an experience in and of itself. Turning the pages and holding it in your hand is just not the same as reading a few facts online. She, because she focuses on the more like fashion forward and glamorous aspects of journalism, if you will, it was a very different point of view for me, but it was very beneficial. My sixth interview was with Ms. Sonia Azad, the Emmy Award-winning health and wellness correspondent at WFAA. The only broadcast journalist I interviewed, Ms. Azad was able to give me a look into how being on TV differs from writing for a magazine, literally. As I walked into our interview, Ms. Azad was walking into the office and suddenly a breaking news story flashed across the TV. She picked up her pace, had me follow her into the dressing room, and she turned up her TV and said, sorry, I just want to watch this. I have to be talking about this event in 10 minutes on live television. So this really showed me, it's allowed me to see for myself how adaptable broadcast journalism has to be at all times because the news never stops. It's always changing. And broadcast journalists have to act like they know what they're talking about at all times. I realized for myself how composed they have to be at all times and how being on TV is something that you really know that you have to, something that you have to know that you really want to do in order to be on TV. I was also taken with her Emmy Award winning story, Passage to India. She traveled into India and documented the entire experience with a camcorder she brought in an airport gift shop. So this was extremely like interesting to me because it showed me just how important visuals are in journalism. Because whether it's with a print story or a broadcast story, being able to see the image that you're talking about, no matter how descriptive the diction is, if you were to write it in a print story, is an unparalleled experience for a reader. My last interview was with Ms. Valerie Wigglesworth of the Dallas Morning News. Ms. Wigglesworth emphasized again the importance of making your presence known in the community and cited several specific examples of ways that the more people you know in the community, the more stories will find their way straight to you. Because she covers the Collin County area strictly, any story that presents itself, no matter how small, is a valuable one. In addition to interviews, I conducted independent research on social media's role in changing the journalism industry. Having social media presence is essential for journalists, as it allows us to stay up to date on breaking news that, as it comes in. Not only that, but it provides an efficient way to provide social commentary and opinions on events, promote happenings in the community, and reach a larger target audience rather than a select group of readers. Social media is also increasingly becoming a news source of its own, with everyday citizens expressing their opinions, and these opinions can even be used as quotes for stories, as it is with celebrities. As you see on the news, you may see an eventual quote from a politician, and as in this year's election, as a quote for a story. Social media brings to light firsthand personal stories, accounts, and inside information that large press organizations may miss. It breaks communication barriers and can even publish information faster than professional media groups can acquire it. Social media and journalism share a symbiotic relationship. Next, I will share my research on the purpose of the press. An article by Joseph Pulitzer showed me that the press is meant to be the mouth, mouth of the common man. It is not a journalist's job to publish the opinions of public figures, because people already know that. It is rather his job to publish what you and I think. Journalists need to speak the thoughts in the heads of you and I. 
They are a link between the public and higher institutions. Journalists should be able to express the concerns of the public and bring them into the light and let higher institutions know what the people want to do about it. A different article detailing USA Today's unraveling of Ryan Lochte's Rio drama is to find the threads that stick out a bit too far and pull at them until they fall apart or come together. It made me realize that journalists not only present the facts they are given, but it is also our job to make larger connections and call for change in society. Finally, I completed research on the role of compassion and object objectivity in journalism. As everyone who watches the news knows, reporters are supposed to remain objective, keeping personal opinion out of a story at all costs. However, eliminating personal opinion is not the same as eliminating compassion. Although journalists hear the tragic stories of regions torn apart by war, families torn apart by murder, and countries torn apart by hate every single day, we must not grow complacent or become desensitized to these atrocities. Showing compassion, even in the form of an emotional voice or a few kind words, is essential to keeping the humanity in journalism. We tell stories human to human for a reason, and that reason is that we can all relate to the stories accompanying to the feelings accompanying a story. If we eliminate the emotion in storytelling, would it even be storytelling at all? In order to avoid compassion fatigue, we need to remain compassionate to every source that we talk to and every story that we talk to them in. My next step will be completing my original work. This year, I've chosen to compose an article detailing the Frisco Independent School District, what they do, how they do it, and how students feel that the district could improve their education experience. With the help of my mentor, I hope to put all of my newfound knowledge to use in formulating an inquisitive and unique article providing insight on an institution that impacts our daily lives in ways that we may not even realize. Journalism is an industry that never stops affecting lives all over the globe. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, our world keeps turning and the things keep happening. It is up to journalists to write them down in history and make sure nothing goes unseen. It seems like an intimidating task, but I am up for the challenge. Thank you.